Now, managing inflammatory bowel disease, what are the emerging options? Inflammatory bowel disease for the uh, medical faculty here is a chronic inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Happens, we don't know why, because of a dysregulation of host immune responses leading to chronic intestinal inflammation. Can be ulcerative colitis, can be Crohn's. Both conditions differ in genetic predisposition, risk factors, clinical endoscopic and histologic features, but management remains more or less the same. History of IBD in India, we didn't really know about it. Six cases were reported in 1936 from the Tropical Med Medicine Gazette that this was not really amoebic colitis. What exactly was it? And then the numbers remained low up to the 80s. This was a disease of the Western world. We had tuberculosis only. Then there was globalization. And we had the chicken uh, Mac Maharaja. We had the swanky malls in Hyderabad, the good roads. And what came together with it? Technology reached the villages. You can see the cell phones. You can see the laptops. Surprisingly, with it, IBD kept increasing in the Asia-Pacific region. We recently analyzed data from Hyderabad, actually, and what we found is that the three countries with the highest incidence in Asia was actually India, and this cohort included Hyderabad, mainland China, and Hong Kong. We presented this uh, in the UEGW, and we find that incidence of IBD is lower than the West, but we are fast catching up. And interestingly, it is affecting the active age group. This is the time when they have their careers, their family life, they have their education, and this is where it is striking. Developing countries, mind you, cover two-thirds of the Earth's surface, are home to three to five billion inhabitants, constituting three quarters of all human humanity. The estimated burden of disease is approximately 13 million cases would be by 2021. Now, IBDs are chronic, lifelong diseases. They need treatment, and treatment is this what we have. But when we have this, and with the numbers increasing in this amounts, can we really afford it? Majority of our patients cannot really afford the infliximab and other drugs. This is data from our institute which is showing that majority of people are still growing low cost. They walk up the steps. We start with steroids because they can't afford the biologics which are perhaps more effective. Biologic agents in our country, in a, where there is abundant tuberculosis, there is the cost, there is the risk of steroids, side effects. So we can see that these good drugs may be not for all, maybe not when we reach an epidemic problem. Ad additionally, there are other uh, unmet needs. You know, disease keeps progressing. The long-term course, the risk of free of complications, the response fails after some time. The drugs have side effects, as you can see here. Treatment of IBD is costly. Cost of diagnostic tests, cost of drugs, lifetime maintenance, hospitalization, and indirect costs, employment, quality of life, rushing to the toilet when they would rather, you know, be at their child's parent-teacher program. The consequential reality, only five patients of 1,069 patients were on biologic therapy a few years ago. So financial impact of IBD therapy is strong. What do we do? What are the emerging treatment options which will cover this problem? We gaze into the crystal ball. Hope for the future. Can we have novel drugs? Can we have some bugs? 
the stool transplantation? Can we take the cells and treat it? Again, another low-cost emerging option. The first product that comes to the mind uh, is our regular haldi. It has been used. It possesses diverse properties, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-proliferative, anti-angiogenic. And how is it acting? It works, it prevents the activation of the nuclear factor KB, prevents translocation of this into the nucleus, prevents the release of inflammatory mediators. It has been used, not from India, 2006 CGH, if they are comparing placebo versus curcumin, we find that yes, the haldi itself can help to maintain remission and prevent relapse. Add on to mesalamine in mild to moderate ulcerative colitis, yes, it does work. And if you can see the comparison of achievement of clinical response, and this is in 2000. So yes, there are studies which are coming in, simple options reported from Asia that could perhaps work. And it's interesting because there is not a single hand which will go up if I ask, does anybody know what is haldi? Or does anybody not know about haldi? But conventional curcumin has some problems. They're poorly absorbed, they're sometimes undetectable in plasma, doesn't reach systemic organs and tissues. So we need an effective and tolerable formulation with a good bioavailability. That is where the pharmaceutical industry is coming in. And Kerala, in its research lab, is actually developing this technology of the drug delivery system, as you can see here, nano-sized droplets in GI fluid, and we are keen to work together in this field to identify whether our haldi can actually become a low-cost treatment option for IBD. We have biosimilars, Professor Shravan Kumar just mentioned, and these are a copy of the patent-expired biological drug. To put it simply, similar but not the same. Copycat versions costing less than half the price. And which, which is Kate Middleton? Now you tell me, you can't. So there are clones. And if it works, and if it is less costly, why not? This is the whole royal family, but this is just a clone. This is not the original. Uh, we have anti-TNF biosimilars now available, and I think in Asia, more comparability studies will emerge, and eventually cost will determine physician and patient acceptability. We can change this, uh, the microbiome or the bacteria in the gut, as these are known to cause uh, a flare of IBD, so the stool transplantation, and I will see some eyebrows go up when I say that, that installation of stool from a healthy person into a sick person can cure inflammatory bowel disease. And in fact, for Clostridium difficile infection, this is an accepted standard and gold standard method of treatment for recurrent infections. So the gut bacteria is there in normal, and in IBD it is altered, and we can actually transplant stool. This can be the least cost. No one, all healthy people have no use for their stool. They flush it down the toilet. And if it can be used, then that is the best. And this is just some studies to show how much improvement there can be from simple stool transplantation. Small series so far, we are starting this process in India. Uh, we are working on the gut microbiome 
and hopefully again this will be something which can emerge from india there are barriers to adoption you know many will uh, think that oh my goodness stirring this tool and getting beyond that there is that yuck factor but a study was done in canada and interestingly if you see the two faces here you doubt which is the patient and which is the doctor what has been found in that survey is that the yuck factor is more for the doctor the patient however feels if i have a low cost option why not so the perceptions and the concerns vary so new options these are what are going to come next is stem cell therapy what about the cells which are there in the body why don't we take that hematopoietic stem cell transplant was used earlier for leukemias interestingly it was found that patients with leukemia and ibd responded so then it was used for ibd and it was found that yes it worked and if you think that well this is all western literature we tried it at our institute you can see here pre therapy an extremely bad severe fistulizing disease and this is post therapy colonoscopy wise this is pre therapy and post therapy so you see that these are the options use the drugs newer low cost drugs. use the bugs use tool transplant use stem cells and these may be the emerging options for treatment in this part of the world with high populations so the key message is ibd is on the rise in emerging countries it's a chronic lifelong high cost disease there is a global need of a low cost yet effective option low cost is not only for india or the developing world or emerging world it is for the globe novel therapies today could well become the next generation low cost treatment option and this is the latest cgh cover they said cannabis smoking may be useful to treat crohn's so we look forward to better options in ivd